What's going on guys, Faris Khan here, and today I'll be explaining the force velocity curve. Now, this is a very important concept because if you understand the force velocity curve, it will influence how you do your programming, your exercise selection, and just give you an overall better grasp of how you should structure your training in order to reach your specific goals. So if we take a look at the force velocity curve right here, I have velocity on the x-axis and the force on the y-axis. And we can see that force and velocity have an inverse relationship, meaning activities that are higher in force tend to be lower in velocity, and then the complete opposite, those activities that are higher in speed or higher in velocity are going to be lower in force. Why this is super important is because if you have a specific goal, like let me improve speed, you need to understand what training adaptation to work on. Each of these are different adaptations and training adaptations are very specific meaning when you put your time into training any one of these specific adaptations, the body will respond and get better at that. Know your goal and know exactly how you should be training along this force velocity curve, and that is what's going to help you reach that goal. So let's take a deeper dive into each one of these training adaptations. First things first, let's look at maximal strength at the far left of the curve. This is gonna be very high in force. Think about things where you're lifting about 90% or more of your one rep max. So if you're squatting, you know, a very, very heavy weight, something that you can only do once or twice, that is considered maximal strength. It's gonna move very slowly. Those grinding reps where you can barely move, that is maximal strength. Even up to your five rep max, to be honest, it's not fast enough to elicit those adaptations on that velocity, but because it's so much force, so much resistance that you have to move, it's really gonna help with that muscle fiber recruitment, it's gonna help with your neural drive. And keep this in mind too, each of these adaptations will get better with higher levels of maximal strength. So it's not something that even if you did wanna get faster, you should skip, but just understand you know, what it is. So maximal strength, lifting about 90% or more of your one rep max. The volume is going to be lower here, but the intensity is going to be very high. Now, moving on the curve, we've got strength speed. This is going to be a little bit lower in terms of percentage compared to your one rep max. So anything below about 85%, like 70 to 85% can be considered strength speed. Let's go back to that squat, for example. If you have that same bar, but you've lowered that weight, you're gonna be able to move it a little bit faster because it's not so close to the maximal amount of resistance that you can move. But it's still not super fast, which is why it's still on that left side of the curve right there. This is gonna be something that is going to resemble power. So if you look at Olympic lifts, for example, it's not as fast as like some sprinting or some box jumps or just other plyometrics, but you have to move that weight with a lot of speed in order to get it up or like a trap bar jump, for example. These different things, you're still moving some resistance, but that speed factor is now there. And again, the adaptations are going to be very different from maximal strength and strength speed. But this is where you have to look at what is going to be that most important thing for reaching my goals. If you wanna get better at sprinting, then you will benefit greatly from power because power or speed strength is going to be that bridge from that maximal strength that strength speed into the more reactive and the faster things along that curve understanding the exercise you do and where it falls along this curve and if you should even be doing it in relation to your goals next up on the lift we have reactive strength this is going to be even faster so there's still maybe a little bit of resistance you're moving but it's so small because you're gonna be able to put a lot of velocity on that. Things like lightly weighted plyometrics, very lightly weighted, but you're still able to bounce very well off the ground. You're still able to put a lot of speed there or even hurdle jumps, for example. These are very reactive, but it's not as fast as say sprinting, for example, which is why it would fall under reactive strength. Now, I made a whole video about reactive strength. It was just last week, so go ahead and check that out where I go deep into this alone. Just to briefly say, when you have higher levels of maximal strength and you've actually worked your power, your speed strength, you're gonna be so much better off training in that specific adaptation of reactive strength. Understanding how different things are gonna influence 
that specific part of the curve. Now, let's go ahead and take a look at speed. Speed is our sprinting. It is the fastest thing that we can do. I say this all the time. There's nothing higher velocity than speed, which is why it's all the way at the right side right there. There is no resistance besides your body weight, which is why you're able to move it with such a high velocity right there. That is the curve in a nutshell. Why this is important to understand is because, like I mentioned, depending on your specific goal, it can influence what you need to work on. Let's say a track athlete and you're doing the 100 meter dash, you're doing the long jump, then of course, you're gonna need some things that are gonna be closer to that right side of the force velocity curve. But let's say it's the off season. During the off season, you do want to be able to work on those other qualities, those other adaptations that are going to influence that right side. Focus on that maximal strength. Work within those specific adaptations and when you get closer to competition is when you wanna be most sport specific. So while you're not close to that competition, you should focus on building up your strength. Now, let's say that you wanna work each of these different adaptations at once. Will you see benefit? Well, sure, but you will benefit a little bit more from putting specific emphasis on specific areas. So that's just my take right there. Anyways, I hope this video was helpful, guys. If you have any questions, leave it in the comment section down below. Be sure to subscribe so you don't miss any of my future content. Thank you all so much for watching, and I'm gonna see you guys soon.